Hi guys and welcome back to the Pride of Villa. So now I'm going to be discussing with you the team that I think Aston Villa should be putting out when the football returns and we play our first game, whether it's going to be against Chelsea or whether it's just going to be completely someone new because of new fixtures. This is the team that I believe Aston Villa should be putting out. And we're going to be discussing, you know, we're going to go through this obviously. Uh, we're going to talk about why I've chosen these players, why I think this formation and just give a bit more facts and content as to what will happen. So if you are going to enjoy this video, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss out on new content to the channel. Be sure to check out FatalGrips.com, they sell the latest and best gaming accessories in the market. And if you use our discount code PRID of Villa, you'll gain 10% off and save yourself a bit of money so when you're free from lockdown, you can go and buy a pint because you have that money. So yeah, check out FatalGrips.com and let's get started. <laughs> So, as we're recording this, the Premier League is still delayed until April the 30th, 2020. Um, but I thought, you know, let's discuss about some of the team, the team that we could be seeing, or at least I would like to see, um, start for when we do return to football. So, the team will be right here, as we can see, I've gone with the 4-4-2 Diamond. Um, I chose this because I think, it, you know, with the, you know, the defensive midfield, I think that provides a little bit more assistance to the back four. I think it helps them out a bit, um, you know, puts a little bit less pressure off of them and gives more, you know, a, belt, a solid defence to rely on. Whilst having that more attacking up front midfielder provides more assistance to our um, centre forwards and give them a better chance of creating some more attacking players. Um, so we're going to go into the team now. In goal, I've got Nyland, you know, whether Pepper Aiden does recover from the virus and is fit enough to play, or out of nowhere, Heaton or Jed Steer return from their injuries. I think Nyland is the number one choice. We've had this discussion already. I know Nathan recently made a video go check that out if you would like discussing about our goalkeeper situation. But for me, Nyland is the number one starter for Aston Villa. He's solid, he's really improved this game. I think in the box, he's commanding, he's ruthless, he gets his position and stays with it. And I think compared to Rayner recently, I think I would like to see Nyland play a bit more. So on the left, I've got Matty Target, no problem there. He's really the only side left back. We've got it's a choice between him, Neil Taylor, and I think any day I would be choosing uh, Target. In the two centrals, I've got Engels and Mings. Solid partnership, Mings obviously proving why he's a really talented centre-back. Um, recently had a little bit for a little bit for um, you know, it happens to everybody, but I think Mings has shown a consistently solid um, defender in himself. Obviously got Engels alongside him again, you know, had a bit of rock form, especially with Tottenham. But, you know, them two work really well together to really help solidify the defensive line and oppose um, a bit of worry on the opposition. And then the right back position, I'm actually going to go with El Mohamedi. Now, I know a lot of people would go with Gilbert, but for me, I think Gilbert has been tiring these past few weeks. I think the stamina and the um, the inexperience has shown in his quality of play. The last the game was diabolical for me. I think he's really needing of a rest, really needing to put his time and focus into his training and his physicality before he can you know, go back onto the pitch. But I think El Mohamedi has been fine. You know, I prefer him to come off the bench because I think, I think, yeah, I think Gilbert's fine to start with, but I think switching them to every 45 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever, gives them both of them experience, but also a bit more time to create an impact in the game. But I think with El Mohamedi's crossing and obviously the formation we're playing, you know, he does have that little bit of pace, so he can still provide it up for our wider players and, you know, obviously the crossing potential that he's got, um, you know, something that we can capitalise on. In the holding midfield position, I've got Nakamba. Um, as we said, this formation for me, you know, gives a bit more stability on the defensive line. And I think Nakamba has shown he's a very, very solid defender. You could go with Douglas Weeds, you could go with Hurahan, you could even put Grealish in the centre of position. But for me, I think I would like a bit more defensive structure, considering we have been leaking a lot of goals right now. And I think Nakamba can help shore us at the back. In the wide positions on the left, I've got Jack Grealish. No complaint there. Obviously, Villa's best player right now. If you've seen our ranking, um, the Aston Villa squad, you obviously know where I put him. So go check that out if you would like to see it. But you know, um, I do think he's a good player. I think maybe I was a little bit um, 
being unfair on him. But yeah, Sonny's in that position. Would like to see more as an attacking midfielder alongside McGinn. But if he wants to play on the left, he can play on the left. That is fine. On the right, we've got Jota. You would be thinking El Ghazi or maybe Trezeguet. For me, both of them have been a bit weak. I don't, as we've said, I'm not really impressed with Trezeguet. I don't think he does enough for me. El Ghazi is fine. He's one of my favourite players, but unfortunately, I just don't think he's got the form right now. And I think it's worth giving Jota the go. I know not a lot of people rate him. I think maybe just sending him out and bringing someone better in, like say Ben Mama, um, would be a better solution. But for me, if it's given the time, given the experience, and we could get some more money out of him, is that what the manager wants to follow through on with the end of the season? But I think Jota's got the pace. We've seen against Everton, he can put in some good passes, getting that assist to Wesley for the first goal. Um, you know, I just think we need to give Jota a bit more credit and a bit more time to prove his own talent on the ball. In that attacking position, I've got the return of Johnny McGinn. Um, it's We've said it already, it's so obvious how much the team misses someone like McGinn. You know, we're just not able to create enough of an attacking threat on the opposition. And I think that's what McGinn does perfectly. You know, he's got the pace, he's got the dribbling, he's got the... um. He's got shooting, obviously. He can score goals. He can score wonders. He can really do it all for me. Um, and I think what's good about playing him there is because of the position we're playing, we'll obviously have two centre forwards. So that means if them two can't, you know, do the business, we've still got that final option in bringing him again a bit more forward and potentially replacing him with Davis or Samata. Um, you know, playing them more, playing him more up front, and you know. Clearly showing that we want to go for the match, we want to go for the win, we want to get the goals. I think when you play a big game, you're going to get there, you're going to get an attacking threat, and you're going to make teams feel worried and cause more mistakes at the back. So yeah, there is no um, nothing else for me to say about McGinn. He is a definite start when he comes back. And then finally, up front, we've got two strikers, and it's obvious for me, it's Samata on the left and Davis on the right. While Samata has been good, I think... You know, considering the amount of goals we score, it's shown that it's a bit lacking. And I think with having a striker alongside him, there's doubled the chance of that. There's a bit more of a partnership there. They can work together and help assist each other, which means there's more creativity on the pitch. Um, obviously, Samata is a good goal scorer. We know that he's giving the ball, giving the opportunity, he can put it away. But I think having someone like Davis alongside him gives him the physicality and the, um, you know, where... Samata may leak in that. I think Davis can really hold up the ball, really pass it along, give Samata that opening chance and have set him up. But then also talking about Davis, who he's obviously a youngster, he doesn't need the loan time for me, but there is massive potential. I would like to see him go. I want to see him stay. And I think having him play matches like this for the last nine games gives him the chance to, if he is wanting to leave, we can get the most amount of money from him. He's a massive talent. Um, you know, as Nathan says, he is a tank on the ball. He's got the physicality, he can push players off, he can be aggressive, which I think this team needs a bit more of. We need a bit more assertance in the game. We need a bit more establishment. And I think you're going to get that with Davis. So, yeah. Uh, let's just go through the formation again. It's 4 4 2. In goal, we've got Nyland. On the left, we've got Target. In the centre backs, we've got Engels. Mings on the right, we've got El Mohamedi. In the defensive midfield, or more holding, we've got Nakamba. In two wider positions, we've got Grinch on the left, Jota on the right, and we've got McGinn up front in the hole, in the attacking midfield position. And then the two strikers, we've got Samata on the left, and we've got Davis on the right. That's our formation for the um, for the game that we hopefully return to see. Leave in the comments down below what you would like to see the formation be if you've got any improvements. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Okay, guys, it's going to do it for the video, obviously. Um, Leave your suggestions, what you do think you're going to see. I don't think it's a bad team. It's really based off what I've seen on Twitter. I know a lot of people want to play 4-4-2, um, but not in the diamond position, more of a wider. So there's two centre, mid, mid, central midfielders and two wider players instead of the diamond. But I think the diamond works better. As we've said, I think it's more defensive structure and more attacking um, threat and creativity. But as we said, leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. Make sure you follow Twitter and Instagram so you can leave your opinions there and photos as well. Do suggest any more future videos that you would like to see us produce. Um, check out fatalgrips.com so you never miss out on the latest innovative game accessories. And remember to use our discount code, which will be in the description. But that's going to wrap it up from me. Thank you all for watching. Up the villa with the pride of villa. See you later, boys.